Hey, this is Handyman Dan with You Can Build This. In this video, we're gonna be going over the fix for what I feel is the number one problem that happens with screen doors or windows, which is the mesh tears. Whether it's your kids or your neighbors or your pets, the fix for it is easier than you might think. And it's relatively cheap to do. First, you need to lay it down on a flat surface. And I prefer the floor because I like to be able to put all my weight into it. You need to remove the old spline, the old mesh, and any hardware. Like this one has a door handle. I've got just a couple of hand tools here. I don't even know what this is called. A little pick thing, needle nose pliers. Really easy, you're just gonna start picking out and pulling this rubber. Comes out pretty easy. Now we need to remove this little handle. I just removed this screw, so now you remove this little piece here. That gives you access to this, and then pull this out. To help reduce the amount of times that I have to go pick up screws, I've learned to add a magnet to my screw bit. Even though these come with magnets, they're still sometimes not strong enough to hold and catch the screws. As you can see, this one's pretty strong. It's held up all five screws that I used when I removed the handle from the screen door. I don't do this repair very much, so I didn't splurge for the wood spline tool. The plastic one has seemed to do the trick just fine. On this tool, you'll notice that there's two different ends. One end has a concave roller, while the other end has a rounded edge. I don't know that I really have a preference. It's really up to you. You're gonna lay out your screen mesh, and I like to lay out my mesh with the roll going down. If you put it with the mesh with the roll going up, then when you try and pull it out across the length of your door, it's just gonna roll back on itself and you're gonna be pretty frustrated. Then you're gonna insert the spline across the top of your door, and that's gonna allow you to roll up your mesh at the bottom and be able to tighten it so you don't have any waves in your mesh once it's done. And I'll show you a really easy tip on how to pull your screen tight at the bottom. I'm going to put my screen as close to the top as I can. I don't need a ton hanging over. I actually want less because then that's less for me to cut off later. And I want as much on the other end so I can pull it tight. Just gonna press this down with my fingers. Now it's gonna take a little bit just to get it in. Once you get it in though, it will go really well. If you look closely, you'll notice that it has ridges that help it stick down into the channel and hold the screen in. It's better to do short strokes because you don't want to push too hard and tear your screen material because then you got to start all over. This was the existing mesh. This is the new mesh. New is on top, existing is on the bottom. It's plastic. I really like to use the thicker mesh, like the pet resistant kind, because it allows me to have a little bit more leeway when I'm using my spline tool. Instead of this metal stuff, you get one tear and it goes to pot. A lot of times when you're pushing in your spline into the channel, if you're using the thicker mesh when you're using your spline tool and it comes off of your spline, then you're less likely to get a tear in your mesh. If you use a flathead screwdriver, be really careful because these can scratch this and make a hole very easily. I'm here at the bottom. It's really important to pull the screen as tight as possible. To help with that, I've got a broomstick that I'm gonna put some double stick tape on. Basically, I'm just gonna wrap it around and this will allow me to pull the screen taut, pull it around and have the door sit on top of it. Now I'm gonna put a weight on this so that it doesn't slide away. From there, you're gonna go on one side and start at the top, and I like to go three quarters of the way down. I like to do this because it gives me a little bit more flexibility. You need to be more flexible. In being able to pull the mesh tight at the bottom. And then you'll just repeat that same process on the other side. It gets a little tricky sometimes. You have to pull your mesh out. You gotta pull this out as well forward, and then you gotta roll it in. All while trying not to have any bunches of mesh like that. Sometimes you gotta pull it out a little bit so you can make sure you're pulling the mesh taut enough. This goes fast as long as you're patient with it. When you try and move too fast, then that's when issues come up. Once you have both of your splines down the sides, you can go ahead and finish up that last little bit as you go towards the bottom. Finish it off by adding a spline across the bottom. After all of your spline is in, then you can start trimming off the excess around the perimeter. I would recommend putting a brand new blade on your knife. All you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut on this edge here. You don't wanna get too close to your face panel and just go really slow. Corners are a little bit tricky. 
symphony of crackle. All that's left is to attach this handle again. We're gonna start out by putting metal back through. Slide this cap over it. This has a little groove that goes in here. The screw that goes in here was the only one without a point. They had cut off the point. All right, here we have it. All together, this one took me about 45 minutes to take out the old mesh and replace it with new mesh. The great thing is, this is the exact same way you would replace mesh on your window. The only difference with windows is that you've got these little clips that you put at the top and the bottom. And this allows you to pull the window out of the channel so you can take it out. After you repair your screen mesh, if you find that your door still isn't sliding very well, you might have an issue with the track. Check in the description below for my video on how to replace the track too. If you go with a screen that's only a little bit bigger than your door, then the pricing is pretty reasonable. It ranges from between nine to twenty-five dollars depending on the thickness of the material you get. The silicone spline material is also very cost effective, ranging anywhere from five to fifteen dollars. If you add in the spline tool, the plastic one's only five bucks and the metal and wood one is only about eleven or twelve dollars. So overall it is possible to do this fix for about $25 to $40 depending on what you go with. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out my other playlists. I've got a lot of videos from quick and easy repairs and fixes to full-scale builds. We'll see you on the next one.